So a couple of days ago, a restaurant owner in Los Angeles named Angela Marsden recorded a video with her honest and raw, emotional, understandably emotional reaction to her city shutdown order. She, like so many restaurant owners in the area and elsewhere in the country, had the rug pulled out from under them when, uh, you know, she spent lots of time and money setting up an outdoor dining area, only to be told that outdoor dining would be banned. There's, of course, no coherent reason to ban outdoor dining. Well, there is no good and coherent reason. The actual reason is that politicians want to flex their muscles, grab more power, tighten their control over the population. That's plenty coherent. I mean, it makes sense, but it isn't very good. At least it's not morally, ethically, or constitutionally good. In any case, Angela Marsden's video has gone viral for good reason. And if you haven't heard or seen it, we'll play a little bit of it here. Uh, here it is. I'm losing everything. Everything I own is being taken away from me. And they set up a movie company right next to my outdoor patio, which is right over here. And people wonder why I'm protesting and why I have had enough. <laughs> they have not given us money and they have shut us down. We cannot survive, my staff cannot survive. Look at this. Tell me that this is dangerous, but right next to me as a slap in my face, that's safe. This is safe, 50 feet away. This is dangerous. Mayor Garcetti and Gavin Newsom is responsible for every single person that doesn't have unemployment, that does not have a job, and all the businesses that are going under. And we need your help. We need somebody to do something about this. What you're, what you're hearing there, by the way, that is uh, righteous indignation. That is real righteous indignation. Okay, that's, that's, that's what righteous indignation sounds like. It doesn't sound like, you know, a, a college student claiming that they're being persecuted because they have to pay back their loans. Now, this is someone who's losing everything while Hollywood studios are setting up their tents. Now, if you're wondering, a report in The Independent says that the setup was for caterers for the film crew of the NBC show Good Girls. And this is really neither here nor there, I suppose. But Wikipedia tells me that the series, quote, follows three suburban Michigan mothers, two of whom are sisters, who are having a hard time trying to make ends meet. They're tired of having everything taken away from them, so they decide to pull off an unlikely heist by robbing a supermarket, only to discover that they're in for more than they bargained. I just wanted to read that to you because the fact that exceptions are being made for this vapid, ridiculous television show only highlights the arbitrary cruelty of all this. But obviously, if those tents were for the crew of a good show, what few exist, it still wouldn't be any less outrageous. Either way, Hollywood productions are now considered essential. Essential to whom is the question? They may indeed be essential to the people working on them, but in that sense, all jobs are essential. And that's been my point all along. All jobs are essential because they all have at least one person who depends on them for survival. But are these productions essential in any other sense? Are they essential in a deeper sense than, say, a restaurant or a bar is essential? No, in fact, I'd say that your local restaurant, where the community comes to gather together and share a meal, is far more important to that community than good girls on NBC. Good girls on NBC could disappear from the face of the earth, and nobody except the people working on it would even notice or care. I didn't even know the show existed until right now. Even the fans of the show would immediately replace it with some other show not missing a beat or stopping to mourn. But when a favorite local business goes under, as many of them are right now, you feel that loss if you're in the community. It's a sad day. Even 20 years later, you may be driving by the place where the business used to be, and you'll turn to the person in the car with you, and you'll say, oh, I, remember, I remember there used to be a bar there called so-and-so, and man, I used to love that place, et cetera, et cetera. 20 years from now, nobody's going to be talking about good girls on NBC or remembering it fondly. This all simply highlights the injustice that we've been witnessing. And it's one of the great injustices ever perpetrated by the American government on its citizens. That, that is not hyperbole. The government is arbitrarily wiping out thousands of businesses all at once while allowing the more powerful companies and in industries to keep running. And even to, more than that, increase their profits. And all the while, the people having their lives destroyed have to endure the lectures and sneering from the people whose lives have only improved, if anything, during the lockdowns. For example, Pete Davidson, a man who is about as witty and charismatic as a dead tortoise, but who still pulls a paycheck as a professional comedian somehow, was on SNL this weekend to mock the lockdown protesters as nothing but a bunch of babies. 
Listen. I take it that you found these protests frustrating. Yeah, man, they're making us look like babies. You know, you know, it's bad when even people in Boston are like, ah, drink at home, you queers. <laughs> and do you think that people should stay at home until the pandemic gets better? Yeah, everyone wants to go have fun, but there's plenty of stuff you could do at home. Like use your official Pete Davidson vibrator. Yeah, great, great jokes there. Um, that's professional, that's professional comedy. By the way, you know why people don't want to eat and drink outside? Because uh, it's it's a high of 40 degrees today in New York. That's why re- that's why restaurants are, are going to lose their business if they have to send their people outside. People aren't going to sit and eat and drink at 40 degree temperatures. But anyway, he says, baby. Yeah, baby. Says, says the uh, 27-year-old man who still looks, acts, and sounds like a seventh grader in after-school detention. A man who, more importantly, has a job, is making money, has not been financially devastated by the lockdowns. It's funny how the people who support the lockdowns and sneer at those who protest and resist the lockdowns are almost always also people who still have jobs. You notice this in the media, too, all the time. Here's a segment that aired on CNN a couple days ago. Listen to this CNN talking head speaking from his studio at his job as he explains why those who are asked to give up their jobs shouldn't complain that much. Listen. What's happening in Los Angeles, I just want to make clear, it's a huge sacrifice he's asking for, but it's not everything. Retail stores are still open. There's a lot of offices still open. Movie television production, which drives the economy out there, it's still happening. He's just asking people to make sensible decisions. And when you look around the world, you see it works. You see what's happened in these European countries where they've instituted measures like this for short periods of time, and it breaks the rise. It just does. Israel's done it like three times. You know, they keep having to do it, but the country is willing to do it by and large. And when they do it, it, it just stops that incredibly fast rise in cases and hospitalizations. It, it works. I mean, it works so much. They've done it three times. That's how much it works. It, it works so much. They just keep doing it. Yes, it's uh, it, it, well, it's a big sacrifice, he says. But but uh, but come on, you know, we can do it. And besides, Walmart's still open. That should be solace to you if you lost your job. It's not the end of the world. What's the problem? It's not everything, he says. You're not asked, being asked to give up everything. Of course, he's being asked to give up nothing. So the guy who's giving up nothing wants you to know that however, however much you're giving up is not really that much in the grand scheme of things. This is why it pains me so much that the people who push for lockdowns also get to pretend that they're the compassionate and selfless ones. The truth is, whether lockdowns, shutdowns, and masking are the right or wrong approach, and I think they're wrong, obviously, but right or wrong, if you're pushing for them, you are almost certainly pushing for them because you're scared and you want to feel safe. You know, you want other people to do something, to submit to something, to give up something, to give up everything, potentially, for your sake, to protect you. Never is this more clear than when four-year-olds are required to wear masks to walk through a store or get on an airplane. That isn't to protect them. They're not at any significant risk from COVID. They also aren't at any significant risk to spread COVID. Yet we want them muzzled, we the adults, so that we feel safer around them. And that guy on CNN or Pete Davidson, they want the bars to stay shut and businesses to close down so that they can be safe. They are asking other people to make a sacrifice for them. Call that whatever you want to call it, but don't call it compassion. Don't call it courage. Don't call it selflessness. It's exactly the opposite. It is cowardice and fear. And that's what we should call it. Hey, you. Uh, yeah, you. You right, you right there. Hit the subscribe button right now. Do it, do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It's somewhat appreciated. <laughs>